Join me as I put BPC-157 and TB-500 to the test to see which delivers the most relief to muscle soreness. In this video, we're gonna be exploring the effectiveness of both of these popular peptides for DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness, which affects athletes as well as fitness enthusiasts alike. So DOMS is characterized as micro muscle traumas, inflammation and soreness after exercise. And this is where either one of these could come in. And it's worth noting I'm talking about both of these peptides in injection form. They are now both available in a capsule form. BPC is uh, bioavailable, not the highest bioavailability, but it can be absorbed. TB500 is also available as a capsule. I don't know anyone that's done it. Uh, there is a fragment also available. So yeah, do comment down below if you do have any results with that. As you might know, BPC157 promotes angiogenesis, the formation of new blood vessels and uh, yeah, increasing nitric oxide expression, so increased blood flow to particular areas that are highly you know, inflamed, basically. So on top of angiogenesis, you get increased expression of growth factors, so it can uh, upregulate collagen synthesis in that particular area, so that's why it can also help with injuries too. So on top of collagen formation and healing tendons and ligaments and other tissues in that area, it also upregulates the expression of IGF-1. So that's something that affects me because my growth hormone levels, they're low. I, I take rapamycin on calorie restriction, a bit of methionine restriction too. So all that combined pushes my IGF-1 levels down, which is obviously it's downstream of growth hormone levels. And yes, yeah, so that for me, this is why delayed onset muscle soreness can be a problem, but it only seems to be localized in my legs. I don't seem to get injured and I'll get onto that shortly. And this is particularly interesting for me, having IGF-1 receptor activity increased in that particular area, rather than having it all across your body because there's certain links with cancer and I'll get onto that in a minute. So now touching on TB500, this is also a subcutaneous shot, but you can just do this anywhere on your body. And the main difference here is you get a systemic buildup of it. So the difference is it systemically improves tissue repair by cellular migration and just reducing fibrosis. So in turn, decreasing muscle inflammation across multiple groups of muscles. And so that gets me onto the difference. So BPC, you could argue it's definitely more of a localized effect. And so that would tend to go for if you had an area of particular high inflammation, it will target that and it will target much faster than TB500. You could do a shorter course of uh, BPC157 and get more of a noticeable effect, where it's a more of a gradual thing with TB500. So say if you're an athlete and you had generalized inflammation across your body, then TB500 would be a good choice. But say if you had particularly intense DOMS in certain areas, then BPC157 could come in. And that's why often people stack them where they will have one particular area that's inflamed, highly inflamed, and then just generalize inflammation across the body. It doesn't matter what sport you're in, DOMS is a real problem. And not just for athletes, it's also a problem for fitness enthusiasts too. Unfortunately, both of these drugs are wider banned, which is a shame because they just, they just generally help people heal faster. So I don't see the necessary problem with that you know is you're not giving someone a an acute uh, performance increase you're just helping them heal so that gets me on to my own cycle with it i'm currently just coming towards the end of doing a cycle of bpc on my legs i've previously did it below my knee because i had knee injuries i had a lot of pain in my cartilage around my knees and so that was a year ago but that has not come back because of my joint protocol i do peptides to regenerate the cartilage and i have all kinds of supplements that just help uh, maintain the joints so that has not come back even with me going up to my original weight that injured me a year ago doing lunges I'm now doing that and I don't get these pains not in the joints I do get muscle soreness and I believe that's just down to my low IGF-1 levels and so that gets me back into that subject so IGF-1 downstream of growth hormone yeah, you don't, uh, there are negatives to having it too high. If you have that sustained for too long, there is evidence it can promote, uh, you know, cellular proliferation and then downstream, further down the line, that could promote cancer in theoretically. But then if you have it too low, then this is what the problem I'm getting where I just get soreness around the muscles. But it's particularly at the moment, it's just isolated to my thigh muscles. And that's why I chose to do BPC rather than just get a systemic buildup of TB500. And as peptides go, BPC-157 is probably one of the most value for money peptides where people get a pronounced effect from it. They really do notice the recovery, the healing benefit from it. So it's real magical peptide, this one. And don't get me wrong, so is TB-500. I last studied it back in the summer, not for injuries per se, but just where I was just trying to put on some muscle 
and it does actually some people do notice a slight anabolic effect from it because i think the muscles are less inflamed you can train a bit harder a bit more frequently and you won't notice that inflammation as much and so it just by calming that down it can just promote muscle growth and touching back on cancer by promoting angiogenesis in a particular area around that muscle inflammation then have no worries about BPC having any link with cancer. And even taking BPC orally, it's less of a pronounced effect, but it does still build up systemically. It does help with injuries, but also repairs the gut too. And yeah, talking about cancer, I, I, you know, angiogenesis, obviously BPC, I think it, it, it's not uh, indiscriminately just causing angiogenesis everywhere across your body is focusing more towards those areas of high inflammation. And so when you're, when you're younger, you're typically your levels of this body protection compound, that's what it stands for, are higher. And are people's levels of cancer higher? Obviously not. So there is obviously some kind of mediating effect. And I think it just targets those particularly inflamed areas. Obviously you wouldn't want to take BPC-157 all the time, but there are times where angiogenesis is needed. When you're highly inflamed, those muscles, then I believe it does have more of a protective effect. I'm not too worried about the, the cancer effect from it. And in animal models with BPC, it hasn't really been shown to increase the risk of cancer, although they're not long-term ones. But yeah, I don't think, if you've got a very anti-cancer lifestyle, you don't, I'm, I'm not so uh, concerned about that. And what does that look like? An anti-cancer lifestyle, so insulin sensitivity, of course, having an anti-inflammatory diet, just trying to minimize inflammation as much as you can. And this could be through minimizing your toxin exposure within reason and uh, good detoxification pathways. So sweating and having foods that help detoxify you. And then you've got fasting, of course, the benefit of that is turning off mTOR, you know, your growth pathway. So that gives your cells a chance to go through autophagy, clearing out those senescent cells. And you can go even deeper still, trying to promote your body, the cells being in a more alkaline state, that's been shown to be uh, anti-cancerous too. So I get both my BPC-157 and TB-500 from Swiss Chems, and I can't fault them, they've been very reliable, good quality products, I even tested their other one, Epitalon, another peptide, and it came back as legit. It's just very reasonably priced, and I'll continue buying them, it's been two years now that I've been getting them. So to conclude, both these peptides have their place for delayed onset muscle soreness, it just depends what kind you have. So if you like that video, then check out this one here on another really highly rated peptide, GHKCU, which is a potent uh, anti-inflammatory and it also helps rebuild collagen too. Thanks for watching. See you next time.